calling new streetcars to South St. Paul and interurbans to Hastings. And so here's the map and what we're talking about is the Concord Street line that ran down Robert and St. Paul to Concord and then took Concord all the way out to uh, St. Paul, to South St. Paul and ending right at the uh, city limits between South St. Paul and Inver Grove. That was before it got called Inver Grove Heights. Now, there was always kind of a dilemma with Concord Street because if you go down along there, there's actually very few people that live along it. Uh, the main reason to have a streetcar line was to go to the South St. Paul stockyards. And so when the stockyards were opened in 1885, it was some sort of a combined effort between the Chicago Great Western Railroad and James J. Hill to open the stockyards. And there were only, I don't know, a small number of people actually living in South St. Paul, nowhere near enough to, uh, to, to provide enough employees for the stockyards. And so the Chicago Great Western wound up running what they called the motor, which was a little steam powered train, which I will bring up here. It's this little guy. And it was one coach and a bi-directional tank engine and it ran back and forth once an hour. So they had two of these tank engines um, and it ran from the foot of Jackson Street in St. Paul and it made no stops every half mile or so on the way out uh, and, and ended at South St. Paul. And this by the way, is at South St. Paul. This is the livestock exchange building behind it. So this little thing ran from 1885 until 1905. Now, during the last decade or so that it ran, the city of South St. Paul was trying like crazy to get Twin City Lines to extend the streetcars. And Twin City Lines was kind of reluctant to do it, mostly because, like I said, there wasn't much online traffic. It was pretty much just the stockyards. Um, but when they finally agreed to do it, it was 1905. And that allowed the Great Western to discontinue these little commuter trains, which were losing them a fair amount of money. So now we'll uh, take a trip on the Twin City lines out. This is the corner of 4th, which is where the Green Line Light Rail crosses now, and Robert Street. You're looking up Robert. And this, by the way, was before they widened Robert Street. This is the most amazing project. For about three blocks along Robert, they widened it, and they went and cut all the buildings back and then reconstructed the building facade. So this was before that happened. But it's kind of imagine, uh, hard to imagine it happening today. Here's the Pioneer Press building, which is the building is still there. And so, of course, they crossed the Robert Street Bridge. And there were two generations of the Robert Street Bridge. This is the first one. And here's the second one, the kind of 1930s Art Deco one. By the way, one of my great moments of triumph, I used to work in the Farwell Osmond Kirk building, which uh, you can't really see here, but it was right on the corner by Robert. And so one day I put on tennis shoes during lunch hour and I actually went up and over the arch. So I'm very pleased with that accomplishment. I couldn't do it today. <laughs> but anyway, it went out Robert Street to the base of the bluff and then turned on Concord. And thanks to the St. Paul Pioneer Press and uh, three different traffic accidents, we actually have documentation of that area. So here you see that down through the flats, which tended to flood. And uh, here we're on the bridge over the Chicago Great Western and something bad has happened here. But we do have streetcars. And then you go another old block and a half or so to the corner of Concord and Robert, which is where the streetcar turned. And once again, who knows how this happened, but it's really a good view of this corner. Here's exactly the same thing. Look at all these bricks in the street. Pretty cool. Oops. And here's another view of a completely different accident. I'm assuming this thing came down the steep grade and ran away. Um, and so as you go down Concord, now this is uh, right by the St. Paul city limits. And if you haven't driven down Concord, you, you might not know that there are actually two versions of Concord. The streetcar is on what they call Old Concord, which went up over the shoulder of this hill. And then there was a new Concord, which apparently was built later. Um, and as you can see, we're leaving St. Paul. Thanks, call again, it says on the sign. But uh, you go out here and Old Concord is still there. So here's an early view. This was before they double tracked the line. And there were a few houses along Concord, but basically since it was at the base of the bluff, you had a few houses on one side and some industry on the other, 
And that was about it. This is a pretty typical view from somebody's front yard. And here you're passing the, uh, the shops of the Chicago Great Western Railroad. These shops were eliminated in later years and they moved up to the roundhouse at State Street. You can tell it's kind of early. It's one of the wood framed cars. Here's the Mississippi River in the background. Now, of course, we're going to take a little side trips um, and I'm going to show you the three pictures of the monorail. The monorail was built in 1885 and it only ran for, I don't know, a month or so as an experiment and it's under running. And of course, the term monorail is really kind of a misnomer because there's like multiple rails up on top and this thing is hanging from them. But um, they, uh, they actually ran, uh, this was on the day that they had the big uh, press demonstration and for officials. And they ran a little Chicago Great Western commuter train out here because they had a station very close to the bottom of this. And this ran up the little Bryant Hill Ravine. Uh, and these guys uh, who built it had a real estate interest up there. Um, so this is it climbing up the ravine. Apparently it worked pretty well. And they approached uh, the St. Paul City Council to try to get a franchise to build this all the way to Minneapolis and they were turned down. And this is it up at the top. And there's a church named for one of the guys who was doing this. And in front of the church is a brass plaque embedded in limestone that shows a picture of the monorail. So it was kind of a flash in the pan, but it was only the second electric railway in Minnesota. So now we're back on Concord and we're on the north side of, um, we're on the north side of uh, South St. Paul. And this is called the South Park Foundry. Apparently this little neighborhood is called South Park. So uh, now we're at Grand and Concord, which is the main intersection in South St. Paul. And here you see a streetcar and you're looking down, this is the entrance to the stockyards. And we've got Farmers Union Livestock here and a cafe with liquor. And here's the stockyards. I love this. This is a panoramic view from about mm, 1915, 1917 or so. And the entrance to the stockyards is over here somewhere. Um, but you can see it was an enormous operation and really employed a lot of people. And as a matter of fact, Twin City Lines had a little car house where they could go and because this was the biggest reverse commute operation in the Twin Cities. And so they put a little car house down here uh, just beyond the stockyards where they could uh, store like two dozen cars uh, and leave them there. And then for the afternoon when the shift change was, they'd send a whole platoon of cars up. Here's another view. We have a couple more views of the intersection of Concord and Grand. And the reason for both of these was that there was a strike going on and the uh, National Guard had been called out and all. Does anybody know if that little Coca-Cola boy ever had a name? Oh, that guy with the bottle cap on his head? Mm -hmm. Good question. And we got a drugstore here. And so here you can see, here's the National Guard guys. Once again, the Stockyards Exchange Building, and you're looking up to the intersection of Concord and Grand. And this is about a block south of the uh, Exchange Building. I think you can see it peeking over the top here. Uh, and I like this because these two photos are taken in ex the exact same location about 40 years apart. So here we are, probably about 1900. I mean, I don't really see any automobiles here yet. It's all horse and buggy. And here's the same view taken in um, about 1950. And this is basically turning around from that previous view and looking south. The downtown phases out pretty quick. You can see the bluff up here, got a bowling alley. And right about here was where uh, Twin City Rapid Transit had uh, a gravel pit. And I've never had it documented that this is the picture in that gravel pit, 
but the other gravel pits they had were very flat. So I'm assuming because we've got an embankment here that this is the South St. Paul one. And then you went another couple of blocks south and at the corner of 6th Street, they had a short line Y. And here's one of the cars backing into the Y. So you had the short line at South St. Paul and then about another mile, mile and a half further was the Y at Linden Street uh, at the edge of Inver Grove. And this is the Y at Linden Street and they backed in hard up against the Chicago Great Western and Rock Island tracks, which you see in the background. Whoops. Well, and here is the city limits for Linden Street. And so the car has reached the end of the line. It's about to back into the Y. Now, what you're looking at here is you can see that there's a track that goes beyond and heads for the side of the road. That's the old St. Paul Southern. And St. Paul Southern, when it quit in either 1927 or 28, Twin City Lines took it over the mile of track within Inver Grove and ran it for about four years and wasn't productive and they abandoned it. So now we're going to go out to St. Paul Southern. And St. Paul Southern um, started in, I think, 1914 or so. Uh, and it was the classic uh, inner urban that probably shouldn't have been built. Um, there were a lot of very speculative inner urbans that never really earned any money, and the St. Paul Southern was one of them. Um, but here it is. It's, they've got big wood in urban cars, and they're in downtown St. Paul, and they're showing it off to the public. And guys are out there walking around, taking a look at it. And this is in downtown. Well, this might be in Hastings. I'm not exactly sure where this is, but this shows the big opening of it. This might be Hastings. And Twin City Lines built them this uh, work car slash snow plow, uh, pretty similar to the one they built for the U of M, kind of different in detail. So taking it out of town, here it is entering the Robert Street Bridge. And I wish we had more pictures of it. Pictures of it are fairly rare. And this uh, is the right hand of that the right hand side of that big panorama I showed you earlier, where you actually can see the original Y at Marie. And once again, I think the Twin City Lines gravel pit was down here. And here are two of the inner air urban cars meeting two of the Twin City Lines cars. Their main shop was in Inver Grove and next to the Rock Island Yard. And the majority of the pictures that we have of them are fighting snow. Somebody had a box camera or something and took pictures of them fighting snow. We're not really sure where all of these are. This was uh, what it looked like out through the open countryside of Nininger Township. Uh, the line went down through Pine Bend and then turned east and went through the open country through Nininger Township to get over to Hastings. This is the Pine Bend substation. And uh, so the, there was a passing siding here. So here you see that they were actually hauling some freight on this thing and meeting the passenger car. This is another view at Pine Bend. And the passenger car is outfitted with uh, a tower here for overhead wire maintenance. They used it for everything. And there was a little shuttle bus running from the Pine Bend substation. Where it went, I really don't know, because there really wasn't much out there. But uh, they were shuttling to something, old bus with a wood body on it. This may also be at Pine Bend, the fact that you have a curve. More views of clearing the line. This is definitely at Pine Bend. And we have a couple of plowing snow. They had a, every time you had a cut on a railroad, uh, it, would, uh, it would drift shut. So, and I think I showed this to you before that here they are running into it with a wood in urban car uh, that doesn't have a snow plow on. And all I can say is think if we had 1300, you know, get up to speed and run repeatedly into a snow drift. And this is what it looked like. You notice they actually put wood across the windows to keep the windows from breaking. And so now we're in Hastings and we have a couple of pictures on the main street of Hastings in the business district. 
This one is a block further to the east. Uh, you can see the, the corner building from the previous picture right there. And so it ran through downtown Hastings. And once again, I don't know exactly where this is. This might be in South St. Paul or Invergrove, I'm just not sure. Or this might be Hastings down towards the Milwaukee Road Depot. Here we are in Hastings at the Phoenix Hotel. And I don't know where Spring Lake is, St. Paul Spring Lake in Hastings. That's a little bit of a mystery. Spring Lake is part of the Mississippi River. Oh, okay. It was All a, right. It was an individual lake, but when they built the Hastings Dam, it expanded it greatly and took it over. Oh, okay. And so here you can see they also put wood on the window of the plow car. And it's got a wing plow on the side. And this, I think, is the last, the last picture. Um, it went down the, the main street of Hastings and then turned the corner and stopped at the Milwaukee Road Depot. And of course, the depot is still there. And so the uh, South St. Paul streetcar continued to 1952. And this is the last streetcar. And this is the uh, Chamber of Commerce guys from South St. Paul, who for some reason uh, dressed up in white cowboy hats and bandanas to celebrate the uh, demise of the streetcar and the start of bus service.